During the Little League Classic game between the Boston Red Sox and the Baltimore Orioles on Sunday night, an odd yet humorous scene unfolded amongst Little Leaguers in the stands. It was seemingly a harmless incident amongst a group of middle schoolers who were just acting goofy, like most middle schoolers do. However, left-wing media nutjobs used a clip of this incident to attempt to frame some of the players in the video as racist. And boy, did they get it wildly wrong. For MRC TV, I'm John Simmons and welcome to the Woke World of Sports. Members of the Davenport, Iowa team were sitting in the bleachers placing the stuffing from some toys on one of their teammates' heads, as you can see from this clip. It's just Little Leaguers being Little Leaguers right there. Hey, next week's Sunday night baseball matchup should be a good one. Atlanta and St. Louis. Cardinals leading the Central. They finish up that three-game series at Bush, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific, ESPN, Deportes, and Radio. And we'll start with 6 Eastern baseball tonight's Sunday night countdown. Now, for most sensible people, there's nothing to see here other than boys just acting like boys. But if you view the world as a place where racism inherently exists and that little kids can be good-for-nothing racists, there's definitely something to see here. The leftist media pounced on this clip and characterized the white players in the video who placed cotton on the black player's head as racist. In their twisted minds, this prank harkened back to the American slave trade of the early to mid-19th century. The Huffington Post wrote a headline that read, Black player covered in cotton by white teammates at Little League World Series. Darren M. Haynes, an anchor at WUSA 9 in DC, echoed this sentiment on a newscast shortly after the event. Here's what's on my mind. Baseball fans are in an uproar after watching this video. A black kid having cotton put on his hair by a bunch of teammates who are white. Now this happened during the Red Sox versus Orioles Little League Classic game in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. And these kids are part of the Iowa Little League baseball team. So if you're confused why this is offensive to some people, well, part of America's darkest past was slavery. White people used to own slaves, black people were slaves, and cotton was a huge product that generated wealth in this country. But it came on the backs of enslaved Africans who were grueling hours in conditions and situations you wouldn't wish on your worst enemy. So to see this black player being covered with cotton by his white teammates, perhaps you can understand why this is upsetting. I believe the kids were not trying to be racist. They just didn't know what they were doing was racist. But let this serve as a reminder why education is the best tool for tackling racism and discrimination. So I don't have to keep talking about senseless acts like this anymore on TV. But all of these outlets completely got a wrong read on the situation because they failed to get the whole story and provide context for this event. The intent of the team was to give each other fake mohawks as an ode to Jaron Lancaster, a pitcher for the team from Hawaii that has taken the tournament by storm with dominant two-way play. But don't just take my word for it, a Snapchat video from one of the teammates supported this theory and was posted with the caption, New Jaron Lancaster, and also revealed that the young black kid in the video was enjoying the antics and even flexed to the crowd in pride over his new hairdo. Oh, and by the way, there were other white teammates who did the exact same thing, rendering the argument that this was a targeted stunt towards the black player as completely irrelevant. But neither of these last two pieces of media were included in the left-wing media stories because they failed to follow a basic principle of journalism, getting the whole story. Because of this, whether simply through poor reporting skills or a malicious disregard for the facts, a group of middle schoolers are being framed as racist bigots who should be punished and educated, as Haynes said. This is the damage that can be done when you combine poor news reporting with outlets that have an agenda to push. Every outlet that did not include context did so because they were more concerned with being viewed as virtuous for calling out racism. But in the process, they forever skewed the way this Iowa team will be viewed by the public at large. And that's a tragedy. So folks, what do you think? Was my analysis a home run or was it a big swing and a miss? Feel free to leave your comments and subscribe to our social media channels that aren't being censored into oblivion. And always remember, be on your A-game and don't cave to the woke agenda in sports. For MRC TV, I'm John Simmons.